We might be getting four Zombies maps at launch with Call of Duty 2024 Black Ops Gulf War Zombies. This is from leaks and rumours, so this is subject to change and or misinformation slash misinterpretation. So as you know, according to the leaks so far, it seemed like we would be getting two Zombies maps on launch with this game, the return to round base, because two different maps have been found in the files of the Call of Duty HQ, one codenamed Garnet and one codenamed Quartz. And not only are these maps found in the files, but they're also backed up from in-game information inside of Modern Warfare 3 and also Black Ops Cold War, as the Quartz map, for example, is rumoured to be set on an island with a boat and feature an elevator that takes you to an underground prison and laboratory, and this lines up with exactly what we know from the ending of Forsaken, where Dr. Peck is heading somewhere in the Pacific Ocean to request a boat, and most likely he is going there to retrieve the Requiem Head slash Strike Team that were apprehended by Eddie Richthofen at the end of Cold War Zombies, and most likely they are being held and experimented in this underground prison on this island. And then, within Modern Warfare 3 Zombies, we know that Jack Fletcher enlisted on an island in the Pacific known as Terminus Island, so most likely, these islands are one and the same. We also know that this map will apparently feature a deck cannon trap that will be on top of this large ship. There's also apparently a wonder weapon on this map that is similar to the KT-4 from Zetsubo Noshima, another island map, as well as the Sliquifier from Die Rise, as it causes zombies to apparently bubble. There is apparently a tentacle trap on the map, and there's apparently a new dog type that will also have tentacles on it. So yeah, I'm really excited for this island map, especially regarding the atmosphere, but then the next map we know of is codenamed Garnet, and this is likely the town in West Virginia that we learn about within the post-Forsaken intel in Cold War Zombies, where we know that Eddie Richthofen had a town shut down here and tried to evacuate all of the town's inhabitants. We know that he is building a large wall around the town, likely to keep it secret from the public, and within the town itself, he plans on digging big tunnels and constructing a lot of stuff. This likely ties into Project Janus, maybe he's building some sort of large dark ether gateway, we're not exactly sure. Nevertheless, it's rumoured that this map could be some sort of transit remake, or at least just the town section, considering the fact that the jet gun has been found in the files. And apparently there's a quest to actually get it, or at least an upgrade quest, that mentions a vermin jump scare in the files, maybe this could potentially be a denizen jump scare if it is some sort of transit remake. Again, that's just speculation, however, the map features in the files, a bank, church, and police tapes all were featured on town. Apparently, it's going to have wire ascending similar to Mawada Toten to easily traverse the map. But this map we know less about than the Quartz map, however, we still know a decent amount. So those are the two maps we know of thus far, and we haven't heard about any other maps for this game. We have literally no clue where other maps could be set. There is no evidence within the files of the game or interpretations you can make from Cold War Zombies' intel or any story information from Modern Warfare 3 Zombies, at least what we are aware of. Maybe there are, but we just haven't picked up on them yet. Nevertheless, recently, the leaker Alix over on Twitter posted that Gulf War Zombies is apparently doing a Black Ops 4, to which he then quoted it, saying 2 a plus. Now, people didn't know exactly what this was referring to, but people were speculating maybe this is referring to the fact that, of course, Black Ops 4 Zombies launched with four Zombies maps. We had two remakes in the Ether story, classified as a Black Ops Pass bonus, as well as Blood of the Dead, and we also had two new Chaos maps, which were Nine and also Voyage of Despair. And then the other leaker, Bob, replied to this, saying, Four, actually. Seemingly confirming that this game is apparently going to have four maps on launch. Now, before I share my thoughts on this leak specifically, I first have a very awesome message to share with you, but stay tuned for my personal analysis. I'll be right back. Introducing the GameSir Nova and Nova Lite controllers, two powerful options designed to elevate your gaming experience. Let's dive into the details and compare their exceptional features. Both controllers feature anti-drift Hall Effect sticks, ensuring precise and accurate control in every game. But here's where they differ. The Nova boasts stylish RGB circles on its sticks, adding a touch of flair to your setup, while the Nova Lite focuses on functionality with a sleek and minimalistic design. When it comes to connectivity, both controllers offer tri-mode options, Bluetooth, 2.4 GHz, and wired connection, giving you the flexibility to play across multiple platforms. Yes, that's right, both controllers work on many different device types, including Nintendo Switch, PC, iOS, and Android devices. For immersive gameplay, the game Sonova comes equipped with motion control capabilities, allowing you to tilt, shake, or rotate the controller for enhanced interaction. Exceptionally beneficial on the Nintendo Switch, meanwhile, the Nova Lite offers a more cost-effective solution without 
uncompromising on performance. Both controllers feature precision tunes, analog triggers, and tactile yet cushioned buttons for responsive and comfortable gameplay. However, the Nova goes a step further with two programmable macro back buttons, giving you customizable control options tailored to your playstyle. Definitely beneficial, especially for first person shooters or any shooters. Now, let's talk price. The Game Sun Nova is priced at $35.99, making it the premium choice for gamers seeking advanced features and stylish aesthetics. On the other hand, the Nova Lite offers excellent value at just $24.99, making it the cost effective king without sacrificing performance. So both are very affordable options compared to other high caliber controllers on the market, so choose which you think is the right for you depending on your affordability and whether you want the advanced features or not. With colour options to suit every performance including retro white and neon teal for the Nova and domino white and night blue for the Nova Lite, there's a controller to match your style. Whether you're a casual gamer or a competitive enthusiast, the Game Sun Nova and Nova Lite controllers deliver exceptional performance and versatility at unbeatable prices. Elevate your gaming experience today with Game Sir, and if either controller entices you, you can check out the link in the description to get either today. Now again, I want to stress that this is a leak, so please take it with a massive grain of salt. I really don't know how likely this is or how legitimate it is, especially when we've had no indication that any other maps are going to be coming thus far. It does make sense though Trek have had four years of development on this game, so maybe they're trying to go out with a bang and have four maps at launch. Now it is rumoured that if you pre-order Black Ops Gulf War, you're going to be able to get zombies early access. I assume it's probably just one of the maps is going to be a pre-order bonus, and then you'll have to wait for the other map when the game actually launches, and in terms of the Easter eggs, I don't know if you'll be able to do the Easter egg if you get early access, let's say it's a week or two early, or whether you're going to have to wait until the full release for the Easter egg to go live for everyone. Anyways, the reason why I'm skeptical about this four zombies maps on launch is that a lot of people critiques Black Ops 4 for having four zombies maps on launch because yes, of course that's a ton of content, bravo, that's so good. However, people felt like it was overwhelming at the time and kind of too much at once and there were many droughts throughout Black Ops 4 Zombies' DLC life cycle and people felt like if they spread out, you know, even just one of these maps at launch, that it would have meant that there weren't so many droughts between contents and that is a good point. I really think they need to be wise with how they release content to ensure that there are no droughts at all and we're always getting consistent content and if they bust their load all at once on the launch of the game like they did with Black Ops 4, it can lead to droughts post-launch unless something crazy is happening and they're going to have four maps at launch and then six in the post-launch, one per season. That's what the Ghost of Hope is speculating on Twitter, another leaker, but again, that just seems like way too much. I know that Trek have had a massive development time for this game, so maybe they're trying to make up for the lack of round-based maps we got in Cold War Zombies. However, at the same time, we know that apparently we're going to be seeing zombies back in COD 2025 as well. Apparently, round-based will be back in that game too. So, we know Trek are apparently making two round-based games at once, and that's what makes me skeptical about seeing this sheer amount of content, because how are they then going to plan for another year of content if they're going to have so much content for this year? You would think they would spread it more out over those two years. And another thing to note is that Black Ops 4 Zombies having four maps at launch, it launched very glitchy. There were extreme bug issues and there was constant blue screens. And maybe if Trek had less content at launch and just refined the game to ensure that there wasn't these crashing issues and they properly QA'd the game, these issues may have not arisen. I would rather them focus on having a solid, smooth launch with just two maps, for example, or even three, then trying to go for four maps and then it releases with a load of bugs. At the same time, they have had more time than, of course, Black Ops 4 Zombies, and as far as we're aware, they haven't had as hectic development as Black Ops 4 Zombies, which, of course, had the campaign cancelled, then they worked on Blackout, etc. There were so many issues behind the scenes, so maybe that's why there were so many crashing issues on launch. At the same time, though, Black Ops 4 Zombies also launched a bit early in October, and Gulf War Zombies is apparently launching in October as well, so both seem like very similar scenarios where they're both releasing a bit earlier, they both apparently have a load of content at launch, so we could see a recipe for disaster. Again, this is just a rumor, so please take it with a grain of salt. I know I keep stressing that, but this could end up being complete BS. We might just see two maps on launch. That's what I'm expecting right now. Now, another thing to point out regarding this four map rumor is we don't necessarily know if they're all round based maps. For example, Terminus Island, as well as the West Virginia town, both could be round based maps, but then the other two maps could be entirely different. One map could be an open world outbreak experience, for example. Another map could be like Vanguard Zombies, where it features a hub that you then teleport to different sections through a portal to do objectives, because we do know that apparently the Vanguard Zombies portal and hub sections have been found in the files of the game. Again, this could be getting misinterpreted because it is a leak, and maybe they're just reusing this portal animation, for example, the spawn of the map, you might just teleport 
apart from the spawn, so the main map, similar to Firebase C and Moon, so that's definitely possible. So yeah, just because we're hearing four maps, it doesn't necessarily mean four round-based maps. And we have no word on what's going on regarding Onslaught either, whether Onslaught will be back. I really hope it is, of course, we've been having all of these zombified multiplayer maps in Modern Warfare 3, but unfortunately we're not having Onslaught in this game, and I'm hoping that they're saving all of these zombified multiplayer maps to then use for some sort of Onslaught experience in COD 2024 Zombies, now that it's using a unified engine and HQ, they can transfer maps between games at ease. Another thing to point out is maybe there are four round-based maps at launch, but maybe only two of the main maps, for example, Terminus Island and the West Virginia Town, maybe the other two are just very small survival maps similar to Nagda Runtoten and, for example, Groston House from World War II Zombies. They don't have a main Easter egg, they're just fun little maps you can enjoy. That's another possibility as well. I definitely wanted to see some smaller maps like that in Cold War that would have helped to fill the gaps between content releases, but unfortunately we never did. So yeah, let me know your thoughts on all of this in the comments below. I will probably be making a big roundup video of everything we know about COD 2024 Zombies so far because I've made tons of videos in the past going over gameplay details that'll be linked in the description. And honestly, we've learned so much now. I think it's become overwhelming for people. So I might make a big roundup video of everything we know. Maybe I'll do a roundup video for multiplayer and also the campaign stuff too. Anyways, do you want to see four round-based maps on launch? I do think this would be an amazing thing for the community as long as the post-launch content has consistent updates as well. If there's four maps on launch and then we get droughts, that's not a good thing. I would rather it be spread out. So it all depends on how things are handled post-launch too. Honestly, I could see this if we didn't know that COD 2025 Zombies was on the horizon too. But since we know that game is on the horizon, that's what makes me skeptical about this. But share your thoughts down below. Thank you for watching the video. Make sure to subscribe if you're not here for latest and greatest Call of Duty news and information. So anyways, thank you for watching and uh, bye.